Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I'm going to go over the unit circle in degrees, in radians. They're going to be exact values of radians. And then we're also going to put in the coordinates of these points. This is for a trigonometry class, IV math class, pre-calculus, calculus class. A lot of students that come back from college say one of the most important things to know is your unit circle. Kind of knowing the unit circle um, for calculus is as important as knowing your multiplication table is for doing algebra. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is go all the way around the circle in degrees. So I'm starting it right here at zero degrees. I rotate counterclockwise uh, and I go all the way around to get 360 degrees. And then every increment there forward is going to be one of three measures. 360 is divisible by 30, 45, 60, and 90. So you do need to know two different triangles. These are exact value triangles that you just have to have memorized. The first one is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The ratios of sides are 1 to 2 to root 3. If you don't have that memorized, then write it down a bunch of times until you do have it down. The second tri triangle is an isosceles right triangle where both the angles are 45 and the ratios of sides are 1, 1, root 2. I mean, this could be a million, a million root 2. They are ratios of sides. And as I go around here, I'm just going to really use my 30, 45s, and 60s, and also my 90s. So this first one is 30, this one is 45, this one is 60, and then I'm still using those same angles just in the other quadrant. So this one would be 30 units up, which would be 150. This one would be 45, so did I say 30 degrees up? This one would be 45 degrees up, or 135. This one would be 60 degrees from 180, or 120. And then up at the top is 90. Going down here, this is 30 degrees below the 180. So it's the exact same distance as this. 30 above, 30 below. So 210, 225, and then 60 below, 240. Then over here, same thing. This is going to be 60 below 300 and 60 to give me 300. 45 below at 315. 30 below to be 330 degrees. And then this is 270 and the 180. Okay, now we're going to look at the radian measure. It is a unit circle. Unit, by definition, means one unit, so the radius is one unit long. Circumference is equal to 2 pi r, but r is equal to 1, so all the way around is going to be 2 pi. So halfway around is going to be pi. And then now I'm just splitting those in half, so I'm just really doing fractional measurements. So if this is 1, this is 1 half. So now I have one half, one, one and a half, two. And then I'm going to split that in half. So half of a half is a quarter. So this is now one fourth, pi over four, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. And then that's four fourths. This is going to be five fourths, six fourths reduced and then 7 fourths. So now I have all my 45s. Next I'm going to do my 60s. 60 into 180 is 3, so 60 is going to be one-third of the way here. So this is one-third. This, this 60 right here will be two-thirds, 2 pi over 3, and then three-thirds reduces to pi. Down here is my next 60, 4 thirds, five thirds, and then six thirds reduces to two pi. Next after that, I'm going to do my six. Thirty is one six to one eighty. So this is one six. This is two six. 
3, 6 reduced, 4, 6. This is going to be 5, 6, 6, 6, 7, pi over 6, 8, pi over 6, 9, pi over 6, 10, pi over 6, and 11, pi over 6. Okay, now I have all of my coordinates. No, I don't. Now I have all of my angles of rotation. Now I need to do my coordinates. So you notice every angle up here is a reference angle of 30, 45, or 60. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I've got to find my 30 degree angle. This value going over will always be my cosine. This value going up will always be my sine. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, sine is opposite. So to get to an xy coordinate, you go adjacent, over, sine, up. So this is 30 degrees. This is a unit circle. Because it's a unit circle, the radius is one unit. So this hypotenuse has to be one, right? So to make that hypotenuse one, I'm going to divide by two, and now it's equal to one. I could do that to the hypotenuse as long as I do it to all the other sides. So I divide this by two, and I divide this by two. The ratio of sides are still the same, but now my hypotenuse is one. So how do I get to this coordinate right here? I travel over this amount. So my x value is root 3 over 2. How do I get up over here? How do I get to that? Well, I went over root 3 over 2, and I went up 1 half. Same thing here. I want my hypotenuse and my isosceles right to be equal to 1. So I'm going to divide this by root 2. That's going to give me 1. I could do that as long as I do it to all the other sides. So 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, and this is 1. So how do I get to this coordinate right here? Well, I go over this amount, 1 over root 2, and I go up 1 over root 2. A little small there. Now I'm on my 60 degree which is this thing's kind of shifted over, right? 60 is going to look the same, but I'm talking about this 60 here. So opposite 60 is the root 3 over 2. Opposite the 30 is 1 over 2. And then the hypotenuse is 1. So I go over 1 half, and I go up root 3 over 2. And I can see it's actually the exact same values of these, just flipped because all I did was flip my triangle. My coordinate up here at 90 degrees, I go over 0, up 1. At 180, I go from right to left. So I go over negative 1, up 0. Down here at 270, I go over 0, up negative 1. And then over here at 0 or 360, I go over 1, up 0. I know this thing's starting to get crowded and look like a lot, but I'm really done now. I'm just going to rewrite all of these fractions throughout the whole circle and put in plus minus signs. So over here in the second quadrant, I am going over from right to left. So I'm going in a negative direction on the over. So this is negative, but I'm still going up. So my y is positive. So this one right here is negative 1 half root 3 over 2. I'm just copying these down. Negative 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2. Over here is negative root 3 over 2. 1 over root 2. Nope. 1 over 2. 1 over 2. 1 half, right? That 1 half there. Same thing down here. These ratios are all going to be exactly the same, but I am going over right to left. So these will all be negative, and I am no longer going up, I am going down. So the way I say down is a negative. I'm going to just copy those same values down. At that 30 degree reference, I am over root 3 over 2, and 1 half, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, and then these are swapped. This is 1 half, root 3 over 2. 
And finally over here in my fourth quadrant, I am over positive. So the first value, the cosine value will be positive, but these will all be negatives. So I'm going to copy the same things down again. Here's my 30 degree reference. It's going to be root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. Remember, these are reversed, so this is positive 1 half, negative root 3 over 2, and this is 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2. So you're not supposed to memorize this. It is supposed to make sense. Uh, it's basically, you're taking the circle, opening it up, and creating a few different rulers out of it. One of the rulers has a denominator of 30 or 6. One has a denominator of 4 for 45s. One has a denominator of 3 for 60s. You do have to have these two triangles down before you can create the unit circle. I just have one last little point. 1 over root 2 on our 45s. A lot of the times you rationalize the denominator, so get rid of the square root in the bottom. To do that, you can multiply by 1. doesn't affect the value. And it'll give you root 2 over root 4, which is equivalent to 2. So a lot of times you'll see these written as root 2 over 2. But root 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1 over root 2. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. That's the unit circle. The more you write it out on a blank piece of paper, the more reps, the quicker you're going to learn it, the longer it's going to stick with you.